Obviously very, very sad news, but impossible not to smile and to feel joy when looking at all that she achieved, all she overcame and all that she produced. I think what Isabel's trying to say, Mick, is you know when a great has passed. You, you know, you, you absolutely know she's left as poorer yeah. from her passing. No, absolutely. Um, there never was anybody like Tina Turner before and there never will be again. Um how to summarise the whole thing in just a couple of minutes, it's, it's impossible. I mean, she, she made her first records when she was just 18 in the late 50s. Um, and with Ike and Tina Turner, uh, she had a, a pretty darn good career. They had two, sorry, three big hits with River Deep, Mountain High, Proud Mary and Nutbush, City Limits. Um, but it looked like her career actually was all over. Uh, after she and Ike, her husband, uh, divorced uh, in the late 70s, um, because as everybody now knows, um, uh, the relationship was horribly destructive. Ike was uh, uh, brutally violent to her. Um, the night she finally left, uh, she had one black eye and a broken nose, not for the first time. Um, and at that point, if 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 she'd recovered from that as a person, you know, gone on to have a, a good life, I think that would have been an enormous success. As it turned out, she she went on to have an extraordinary solo career, which completely dwarfed everything she'd done before with Ike um, and made her one of the very biggest stars of the 80s. She was right up there with Madonna, Bruce Springsteen, um, and uh, I was laughing earlier, Amy, Eamon, when you were talking about the way she dances. Um, if you look at some of those old clips with Ike and Tina Turner, um, or, or if you ever saw her live, you know, she was an absolute force of nature. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, there was a great sexuality to her, but, but she wasn't uh, a little girl posing for the, for the adults. She was a grown woman bringing her full, the full force of her personality and her life to her performance. And she ended up having so many hits. I was reading about this earlier just to brush up, and it's astonishing. I mean, the, the, the Private Dancer album, there were seven singles released from that, three yeah. of which are but now... That but that was her classic. second coming, Mick, wasn't um, it? I mean, and when, she went on when you talk worked... about her life after uh, Ike... I mean, there in the 80s, she releases that album, Private Dancer, and the single Private Dancer as well. And then she just took off after that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, she she um, her career had completely stalled in the late 70s. She finally got a break, actually, here in the UK, when uh, Martin Ware, formerly of the Human League, and Heaven 17 um, produced uh, a track for her on the Private Dancer album, which was her version of Al Green's Let's Stay Together. It was oh, a big yeah. hit here, big hit all over the world. In fact, it became in America the biggest selling 12-inch record of all time at that moment in the 80s. And then by the time you get to uh, What's Love Got To Do With It, from the same album, written, by the way, uh, by one of the former members of Gallagher and Lyle, um, and, and the track Private Dancer, which I don't know if you know, Eamon, was written by Mark Knopfler of Dire Straits. Um, in fact, it was scheduled to be included on the Dire Straits album Love Over Gold, but Mark uh, sensibly decided at the very last moment uh. that... Um, a grown man couldn't really sing that song. I mean, I suppose a grown man could sing that song, but really... It was better know, her Tina singing it. But it listen, listen, Mick, um, sorry, that Beyoncé duet she did was Pride Mary. Oh, yes. Pride Mary. Um, so so, so good. we're talking about her artistry and her performance levels, Mick, and you were, you know, you were so lucky to have her in your life to, to have met her and whatever. But off stage... What, what was she like? I mean, obviously she had a, a magnificently strong presence on stage. I've no idea as a person 
what she was like. I've rarely seen interviews of her. I don't really see her doing the chat show rounds. You've got or... to watch that documentary that came out. It was at yeah. Netflix last year, Mick. It's a long documentary, but I couldn't turn it off. I was mm. absolutely gripped. And she's interviewed a bit in that. What, what, what was she like <laughs> as, a, as a person? Um, completely different from what she was like on stage. Um, extraordinarily calm. Um, no fuss. Um, she was into Buddhism. She was, in fact, a Buddhist. She didn't uh, go around broadcasting the fact particularly. Um, it was a private thing for her, but it was a it was a lifelong thing. And um, I remember seeing her sitting in a in a, a backstage area and thinking, "Oh, that woman looks just like Tina Turner," without yeah. realizing for a moment it was her because. She was just on her own, sitting quietly, no big deal. And lots of people I know that did work with Tina uh, say the same thing. Very quiet, uh, very private. Um, uh, if there's such a thing as a gentle woman, um, mm -hmm. as opposed to a gentle man, uh, that was Tina. Um, and I think you can see that as well, that, you know, once she did retire, she stayed retired. I mean, there were, there were, she came back a couple of times with some music, but her touring life, her showbiz life, when she said, I'm retired, she stayed retired. And she was a, she was a, a grown up in a, in a, in an industry run by infants quite often. Yeah. So I think she was amazingly uh, composed and, um, just left it on the stage, brought everything yeah. to the stage, and when the show was over, um, went home very quietly, no big fuss. Yeah, she, she happily remarried, didn't she, to a, a German record company exec uh, on the banks of Lake Zurich in 1985 uh, and ended up becoming a Swiss citizen, and that's where she ultimately died. But tragically, t her two sons died before she did, um, although she did also adopt Ica's uh, remaining children and, and bring them up and they uh, succeed her and, and still, um, you know, live on today. But she had so much tragedy and yet so much success. She's a real she lived female a life. icon. Thank you very much, Mick. Mick fascinating talking to you, Mick, and thanks for sharing all those thoughts and that analysis on, on just how good she was with us. Really appreciate it. Mick Wall is a music journalist speaking to us live from Oxfordshire this morning. Thank you. And um, you look, I mean, the front of the Telegraph today, now that is a picture, if you could see that. It's a, it's a real passionate, energy-driven uh, photograph, not posed or whatever, li live on stage, but uh, really, really nice, good shot there as well. Um.